Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy and welcome to part 13 of my ultimate guide to Logic Pro. Now at this point, we're starting to get near the end of the Logic Pro Essentials portion of this series. So I want to shift the focus for a bit over to working with audio, including audio recording with a microphone, audio comping and editing techniques, editing to the grid in the tracks area in Logic, and building out arrangements in the tracks area. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the basics of how to record with a microphone in Logic Pro, and I'll also show you the basics of how to store your audio takes in folders, in take folders. And I'll save the editing and comping of these takes for the next video. So in this video, I'm going to be doing a little recording with my acoustic guitar, and in the next video, I'll follow up with vocals. But first, I wanna take a quick moment to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Boombox. As a producer and mixing engineer who primarily works remotely from my home studio, I really appreciate Boombox.io for keeping my projects and client feedback organized and all in one place. I can batch upload uncompressed audio files, I can invite collaborators to listen and leave timestamped feedback on my tracks, and create different versions of a project, and ultimately helps me get the annoying parts of my job done quicker so I can spend more time on being creative as a music producer. But don't take my word for it, try it out for yourself. You can sign up today at boombox.io and get 10 gigabytes of free storage. So I'll be the first person to tell you that recording audio is best done as a two-person job. You have one person who is performing the music or singing and another person who's operating Logic. This also allows you to put your musician in a completely different tracking room from the control room for better isolation and possibly better acoustics. However, I think most people coming to this channel to learn Logic are probably working out of a home studio. So for these examples, I'm just recording everything here in my control room and I'm operating and controlling Logic myself off screen. So first, let's hop over to Logic and set it up for recording. Okay, first and foremost, we need to lower the IO buffer size in Logic to optimize and minimize the latency. You can do that by going up to Logic Pro, Settings, and then go to Audio. From here, under the IO buffer size, make sure that this is set to the lowest value or one of the lowest values. I typically use 32 samples or 64 samples for recording because they give me the lowest amount of latency. You can see that the round trip latency for recording at 32 samples is only 8.5 milliseconds. So that's basically gonna be completely imperceptible. If I were to set this to a higher buffer, like 1024 or 512, I'm gonna get so much latency that I'll be hearing myself in the recording slightly behind where I'm actually playing. So there'll be a noticeable lag or a noticeable delay in my headphones. So we want to avoid that. Second, I'm gonna go into my recording settings. You can get here by going back up to Logic Pro settings and going to recording, or you can just click the tabs up here to switch over to the recording tab. And the option I'm looking for here is under overlapping track recordings. We dealt with these a bit with MIDI for MIDI merge. Now we're gonna deal with these for audio. We want both cycle off and cycle on to be set to create take folder. What this is going to do is it's going to store every audio recording that we make inside of a take folder so that we can just have them conveniently tucked away so we can switch between these different takes later on in editing. There are other ways to work with audio recordings, but this is my favorite. So make sure both of these are set to create take folder. Now, while we're in this window, there's a couple other options we can choose here under audio recording file type you can set your recording file types. So you can set this as an AIFF, a WAV file, or a CAF file. Typically, AIFF and WAV are the most common for recording audio. I like to set this to WAV, but there's really no difference between an AIFF file and a WAV file. The quality is exactly the same. You can also adjust your bit depth here. You can choose between a 24-bit recording, and if you uncheck this, it will make a 16-bit recording. Bit depth has to do with the bit resolution of your recorded audio files, and it has a direct effect on how low the noise floor in the recording is. For pretty much all audio recordings in Logic, I recommend going with 24-bit. There's really no reason to turn this option off. Next, we want to adjust the sample rate. Let's go up to File, Project Settings, and then from here, we're gonna go to Audio, 
So what we're looking at here is the sample rate. And you'll see for me, I've got six different options. Your options may appear different here. You may have certain ones that are italicized, essentially telling you that you can't use those sample rates. So the sample rate you choose is going to be dependent on what audio interface you have and what sample rates your interface is capable of recording at. Now, historically speaking, 44.1, 88.2, and 176.4 have been used for making musical recordings, whereas 48, 96, and 192 were typically reserved for audio for video or film. Nowadays, this doesn't matter quite as much. I've used 48K for a lot of musical recordings. You just have to keep in mind that while this does increase the quality of the audio, and I'll explain how it does in just a bit, it also increases the file size. So there is nothing wrong with recording at 44.1, and I almost never record at these upper sample rates. I th think usually the highest sample rate I work at is 88.2 nowadays. So I'm just going to stick with 44.1. So what does the sample rate actually do? Well, the sample rate controls the number of samples per second that are recorded during the analog to digital conversion process. Sample rate has a direct effect on the frequency range of your recordings. So when you use higher sample rates, you can expect to hear a better sounding high end. So your high end frequencies are going to be more clear because they can be more accurately captured because there's more samples per second during the analog to digital conversion process. When you have less samples per second, the top end suffers a bit. But again, I don't want you to think that there's something wrong with 44.1. 44,100 samples per second is plenty of samples to capture the full audible frequency range that we typically hear. That's 20 hertz up to 20,000 hertz. Now, I know I'm giving really simple explanations for sample rate and bit depth in this video. These are actually much deeper topics, and there's a lot more that can be said about them and how they affect the quality of your audio recordings. But I'll save that for a future video as well, because realistically, the accuracy of your playing, the type of microphone you use, the type of space you're recording in and the miking technique that you're using will have a more noticeable effect on the recording quality than the sample rate and bit depth will. So again, we'll come back to sample rate and bit depth in a deep dive video in the future. The next thing I want to do is I want to turn on or turn off a count in. A count in basically will give you a four beat count in. You can actually set this to other values. If you click and hold, you can set this to one bar, two bars, three bars, etc. I'm gonna keep it on one bar. And with this option in, if I hit record, I'll just hit R to record. So you heard that there was four clicks and then it started making the recording at bar one. And this will happen anywhere on the timeline. If I set the playhead here at bar 11 and then hit R, The recording starts at bar 11, but I'm given a four beat count in before the recording starts. So that's what the count in does. The button right next to it are the metronome settings. You can click and hold on this. And I like to use the click while recording mode, which means that if I just press play, I don't get any metronome. But then if I press record, I do get a metronome. So that's really helpful to not have to go back and forth between turning on and off your metronome a bunch of times. Now there's different ways to approach where to start your recording. I like to start my recordings at bar two. So what I'm gonna do for this video is I'm gonna hit record, wait four clicks for the count in, and then I'm gonna wait four more clicks, and then I'll start playing at bar two. I like to start at bar two because if you start right on bar one, right on a downbeat, there's a chance that the front end of a note might be a bit early and might get cut off in the recording. So I always like to start my recordings on bar two. And lastly, before I start recording, I need to make sure that my track here is set up with the correct input. So to do that, I'm going to select the track. I'm gonna to go to the track input selector here and go to input, and then you can choose the input on your audio interface that your microphone is plugged into. So mine is plugged into input two, so I'm gonna go ahead and select that here. Since we're recording with just one microphone, I'm going to make sure that the track format is set to mono. That's what this little circle is here. 
And if you click and hold on this, you can choose between mono, stereo, left, right, or surround. But the only time you want to use stereo here is if you're actually working with two microphones. See how the input changes to input one and two now because it accepts two different inputs. So one big recording mistake I see all the time is people set this to stereo because they think, oh, my song is in stereo, so I need to record in stereo. No, your recordings, if you're just using a single mic, will be mono. So you're just putting a mono recording with a single channel inside of a stereo project. So I'll go ahead and set this to input two again and make it mono. So my mic is plugged into input two on my audio interface and I'm using a condenser microphone for this. So I have phantom power turned on, that's the 48V button on your audio interface. And I've adjusted the microphone gain on the interface to get a healthy signal level. Typically what I shoot for is the peak recording level to be somewhere around negative 12 dB on the meters in Logic. It's okay if it goes a little bit higher, you just don't want the recording level to be so high that you risk peaking or clipping the recording level. And you also don't want it so low so that you have to pull up the volume later, which also raises the noise floor. So I find negative 12 dB on the meters a good starting point. Although be careful, if you pull down the fader in Logic, this actually affects the metering level unless you turn on pre-fader metering mode, which will show you the same signal level regardless of the fader level. You can get to this by going up to mix, and then going down to pre-fader metering. So you just turn that on here. I recommend using pre-fader metering anytime you're recording just for this reason. Okay, so now I'm ready to make my first audio recording. I'm just gonna double click here to change the name. I'll call this Acoustic Guitar One. I'll unmute the track, but before I click the record enable button, I'm gonna pull my monitor volume all the way down because I don't want any feedback between the microphone and the speakers and make sure you use headphones while recording, otherwise you're gonna end up with a bunch of bleed from the speakers. So I'll record enable the track, and let's give this a shot. And I'm also going to lower the tempo to 108. Let's make the song a bit slower. 120 is a bit fast. Okay, so I've made my first recording here, and it was a pretty good take, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna record right on top of this take. Now, as long as you have that take folders recording setting I showed you earlier turned on, you can actually record right on top of this existing recording, and Logic will automatically place this in a take folder. So let's give this another shot. Okay, so right after you add in that second take, what you'll see is this. And what this is, is a take folder at the top, and then you're seeing take one down here, and then take two, the one we just did right here. Now, if I want to select take one, let's say I like to take one more than take two, it's just as simple as clicking on the take that you want. So if I wanna use take two, I click here, take one, I click here. So whatever is highlighted in blue, or the color of the region, is the take that you're using. The ones that are grayed out are the takes that you're not using. And once you're done with all of that, you can actually just double click on the take folder to collapse it. Now I can just play back my recording here and give it a listen.
Okay, so what I want to do now is I'm going to make another audio track and I'm going to make another recording and double track my guitar. So what I'm going to do is select this track, duplicate it, and then I'll just name this one Acoustic Guitar 2 and I'll make sure that the input's correct, input 2. And what I like to do is pan one of these left and pan the other one right for a really nice stereo effect. So let's add one more guitar in here. Whoops, I made a mistake. No big deal. Now I could restart the recording from the beginning, or I could simply just jump in somewhere here in the middle. I'm going to set the playhead at bar 7 and hit record and just jump in when I feel comfortable. Now we're gonna dive into take folders quite a bit more in the next video, but I do wanna give you just a little taste of something called quick swipe comping. This is an integrated editing feature that's built into Logic's take folders. So you can see take one down here at the bottom, take two at the top, and you can see that where I started take two, it's blue because that's the take that's being used. But down here in take one, it's not being used after this point. So with quick swipe comping, you can actually just grab this little line here, this little joining point or editing point, and you can bring this in. And what it'll automatically do is crossfade the edit point between take one and take two. So what's gonna happen when I press play here is it's gonna play take one and then jump into take two right at this point. And if you're not so sure about that edit point, you can move it around to another location that maybe sounds a bit better. Now, when I bring both recordings back in, I can hear the stereo effect that's created by double tracking these guitars. Let's add one more track to this. Let's add a little bit of a lead or something to it. I'll just sort of improv a bit. So I'll double click down here to create a new audio track. Make sure it's set to input two, make sure it's mono. And I'll just call this ACC guitar lead. And there you go, that's an introduction to recording audio with a microphone in Logic Pro. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. Thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.